Welcome back to The Daily Grind, everyone. So today we're gonna to be planting some cabbage with the square foot gardening method. I've got this seeding square here. I also have this to plant some peas. Now I already planted them, they've already come up, but I will bring you guys along and show you exactly the method that I use to be able to get these planted. And then I'll bring you guys in, you can see kind of the progress here and how they're doing. It really didn't take much time at all for these to pop up. Of course, they're cabbage. They're really quick to be able to come up. Cabbage don't take that long. Unlike the last video with the carrots, carrots take a while. Speaking of, let's go ahead and take a look at the carrots and how they're doing. If you guys have been following along, I'm, I'm using the square foot gardening technique here to plant all the veggies in my raised beds this winter. It took me a little bit to be able to kind of figure out how to use it, but I think I got the method down. So let's go ahead and go over this. I'm gonna bring you guys along, show you kind of some techniques that I found that help with this. Check this out. These are the carrots that I did on the last video. So I'm gonna link this at the very end of the video here, right there, also down in the description section if you wanna see me planting these carrots and kinda of how, how that went. Um, they're coming along really well. They're looking really good. I've got some of these with like six true leaves already. They're really growing pretty good. So I'm pretty happy about that. And of course the peas are doing really well as well. So they're, they're getting tall. They're starting to send out their tendrils and grasp onto these stakes that I've got. We're gonna be planting with this square foot method in my big four by eight garden plot here. Uh, the main thing we're gonna be growing is cabbages. So we've got the mini Napa. This did really well last year. I had really good luck with this mini Napa. I tried other uh, cabbage varieties and they just did not do well. This did the best, so this is definitely what I'm planting this year. I also have bok choy. Um, I've got the extra dwarf one. That's the really small one. And then I've got the white stem. So the white stem is much larger. Uh, the extra dwarf, they, they don't get very big. So those can be planted closer together. I'm gonna be putting that on the very end back there. And of course the larger cabbages up here. So that way we don't have light issues. Uh, the mini, uh, the extra dwarf uh, bok choy is only 30 days of maturity. So we can actually get a couple of those in, in the same time frame as these. These are 70 days to maturity. So I can get two those for the same time as the white uh, so i mean you can get a lot out of that uh, this is nine almost 90 days to maturity so get three sets of those in the same time frame so there we go and then back here i've got these stakes up here okay and that's because i'm going to be planting some peas the sugar pod uh, the snow peas i really like these um, i'm actually going to do two rows here and this will be my trellis coming up. And then in between, just to keep pests away and everything, I'm gonna do chives. So uh, regular common chive. And then I'm also gonna do leeks. Now I was thinking about doing onions, but I read that onions, um, the oils in onions can actually inhibit the growth of cabbage. So I don't wanna do that. So we'll do leek and chives, and that should give the same pest repelling ability. So let's get to planting. First, I'm gonna start with the sugar pod peas and that's where I've got this so it's not the square foot gardening method but it pretty much is um, this is gonna make me rows which actually I'm, I'm gonna be doing instead for this but you can see I've got them I'm gonna put the rows like this and excuse my my rooster in the back but we'll make we'll make some uh, holes here And you can plant these peas really close together every two inch, which that's what this is, is two inches, every two inch. I like to do this. Today is October 9th. So we can take a look at that and keep track and know how long all this takes. So I'm gonna put one per hole. And by the way, I put it on this end because the sun is coming from that direction this way. And so these get tall. I don't want them to block the light of everything else. So just the back row here. Oh.
All right, the peas are planted. Let's get them uh, covered. All right, so one thing I learned is with this, over the last couple that I did, my beds aren't necessarily exactly the right size. And I don't get all eight squares going down. And that's because, well, first I'm taking up a spot right in the front here with those beans. See if I can get you down there. So that's gonna be cutting out some. Plus I've got a bar in the center and that bar is set off this direction a little more. That bar um, is to hold this center from caving out if that makes sense or, or falling out kind of holds it together uh, so i've learned that i need to start from that bar and work this way and work that way because i'm not going to necessarily get the perfect four rows from here to here uh, it's going to only be three that'll work out here because this is towards the back and this isn't quite one foot of area so we might get three So next I'm going to be working on the Napa cabbage. I'm going to do Napa cabbage, all Napa cabbage on this side. However, I am going to also seed some chive in between. So that way I'm utilizing all the space that I can in this garden. First the Napa cabbage says 12 to 24 inches apart. I think 12 inches is fine, which is one of these squares. So if I plant in the center, that's going to be my planting point for the cabbage. However, I am going to actually plant in five here because I'm going to pick these when they're a little small. I'm going to let them start a little bigger and then we'll pick these and thin them out a little bit later. In these spots I'll put the chive. Okay so that'll surround it and then of course I'll pick these ones here later uh, with the Napa cabbage and leave the center one to grow. I might have to leave one of these if this center one isn't doing well but that'll guarantee that I get at least one in one of these square foot sections. So that's what I'm going to do. And we've got this tool. I'm going to get it about one inch deep. So I put my thumb on there or my finger. And I push down about one inch. We'll do that all the way around. All, all of those yellow. Now we're gonna get some chive in here. I'm just gonna do four chive on the outskirts here. And they've got this little tool thing that you can scoop up the seeds like this. I don't find this helpful at all. Uh, maybe the initial scoop, I put it in my hand and then start the work. It's really not helpful in my opinion. And you might notice also I'm not using the funnel. I don't find that helpful either. I find it's too cumbersome to move it around. So I just don't use it. And there we go. I don't have enough room. Now I'm gonna do something a little different. I'm gonna be doing leeks in this back row. So this was chive. This one's gonna be leeks with the same, I'm, I'm doing I'm still doing that Chinese cabbage, but uh, the Napa, I'm gonna be doing leeks. Now I'm gonna do the same, I think, pattern with the leeks, because, uh, but they do get big, but we'll be removing these anyway. So it'll just leave, uh, at one point we'll be removing those. Leeks take a while. So pretty much it'll just leave these with that center. So I think that's what I'll do. 
All right, so there's the leaks. All right, so now I'm gonna do leaks again. This was chive, that's leak, and then I think this row I'll do chive again. So I'm gonna do the same exact pattern. Uh, we've got the white stem pak choy. This has the same spacing requirements, 12 to 24 inch. So we're gonna do exactly the same as the other. Where we're gonna differ is gonna be the dwarf one because it is much smaller and we can handle quite a few more. So we've got the, the five here, and then, oh, oh, not that one. There, so one, two, three, four leaks. And I think this'll, this'll work. We'll do two rows of that, and then two rows of the baby bok choy. All right, so this next one is going to be the mini extra dwarf bok choy. And that's every four inches it can be planted. It's not like these, it's once every foot. Okay, it's not 12 to, you know, it, it, it's much closer. This is four inches right there to that mark. If you look, that's the yellow. Okay, so every four inches, they're always four inches apart from each other. So I'm gonna do the yellow and I'm not gonna do any other plants in this. It's just gonna be bok choy all, the, all along. Now these are fast growing, they're only 30 days. Once I rip this out, I have another section here that I can either put more bok choy or something else. And the nice thing is it's right in the front, so we're not gonna get any disturbance with light coming to further back because these will be brand new plants. They'll be harvested, they're much shorter, smaller, once they're harvested and I put something else in, these will be tall enough to not get the light blocked. So. So one thing I will say about this seeding square thing is that it does make it more difficult to plant. I think I've said this before on other videos with the carrots and also 
over there with the um, radishes and turnips but this you know it it is more difficult i'm seeing here though where i can really pack in so much more in a small space so while it does take longer you don't have to thin out the seedlings as much and you get so many more so i've got eight total squares here with this baby bok choy and i'm getting nine per square so nine total plants per square that those can actually fully grow and i can make full-size plants that's 72 total plants in just a two by four section that's amazing that's a lot so i'm going to keep monitoring this over time and seeing how this really does work and if i can really actually increase my harvest versus doing a row system it might it might be really beneficial to do this even though it does take longer i mean i'm, I'm probably an hour in and this would have been 15 20 minutes if i was just seeding by a row because you just make a row and drop the seeds in cover and you're good to go i'm already an hour in now i've got to cover everything i've got to pack it down a little bit so i'm not even done probably be a total of an hour and 20 minutes but 72 total here granted here even though i've got five per for full-grown plants i can only get eight of them because i've got to thin these out but currently i've got 40 of them of course i'm gonna to have to pick them when they're real small still baby greens are really good so we'll utilize the space plus i've got leeks and chives in here as well and those can stay and then here i've got the same thing as here it's going to be 40 total but really for full-grown plants only eight but it's still is probably about at this point when you're doing the larger size plants i would say i would get about the same per the row because i would i would just make drill hole marks and then drop the seeds in and get four per row if that makes sense i might do a few more per row and get a little more in there but i i, I will say i think i think this is going to actually be beneficial since um, i am planting some not right in a row but kind of a secondary row or third row even in between each kind of to get extra plants that i will end up uh, plucking plus i've got the ability to be putting in leaks and stuff at a good space so now it's time to cover them and water and i've got a tool to cover them i think it's going to work plus it'll help pack it down uh, and give more seed to soil contact All right, now it's time to water. So it's really interesting. Some of these started to pop up, but they never really grew right in the center. I mean, even the ones that are starting to, they're small comparably. This is the larger of the bok choy. These are the smaller ones of the bok choy. The smaller ones should be ready in like a week or two. Uh, they really, once they reach this stage, they really pop and grow super quickly. And these are a 30 day, roughly, um, variety. So they should be ready in 30 days. I find that I need a little bit more time with them. Most of my veggies I do, I don't know why, but I do need a little bit more time, you know, probably around 35 days, maybe 40. But these are really awesome in soups. I really like bok choy for that. These are the larger bok choy. So these are much bigger. These are the dwarf variety. And then the Napa cabbage. As you guys remember when I planted this. The Napa cabbage is doing really well also. And I should have these ready in probably 60 days from now. They've already been planted about 30 days ago roughly. Maybe a little less. Oh, and by the way, here we go. You can see October 28th. And I'm not sure if I had done that when I planted these, but I'm gonna put the date that I planted right here for you guys so you can see exactly, exactly how long it took to get to this point. Now, these did sprout two weeks ago or so. However, if you guys remember, I was planting some chive, which are these in between, and those didn't pop up until 
just a couple days ago. You can see they're all along here. I've got a bunch of the leaks popping up now. And that kind of maximizes the space. But it is interesting how I've got some good sized Napa cabbage on the sides, but then the ones in the center, I mean, there's a couple of them that are doing okay. Most of the ones in the center are not, they're really small. And the same thing with the bok choy, same thing with this bok choy, all that. It's just the center seems to be a little bit different. And I don't know what that is. I don't know if it has to do with how much moisture is in. Maybe there was too much and the center kind of held that moisture more than the sides. That, that would make more sense to me that the center would hold moisture much longer than the sides, but maybe it was too much. I don't know. I don't know the reason why the center is not doing as good. I did add fertilizer all through this and it wasn't just in like the edges. So if you guys have an idea, you let me know. But either way, this seating square really did maximize this. Look at all this. I mean, it is a sea of green here. And once these get even bigger, it's just gonna completely cover the soil here, except for, of course, these patches. That's not growing well, but that really maximized it. So if I was doing rows, I would have a row and I would be spacing the rows out quite a bit. So it's almost like I'm getting a secondary row in between and it does keep them spaced perfectly. And the nice thing is these are ready in about a week to two weeks, but I can keep them for a little bit longer so I can kind of do stews um, periodically. I don't have to harvest them all. And once they start getting a little too close together, you know, larger, I can kind of pick the ones in between to allow the other ones to grow out a little bit more full. And same thing with the Napa cabbage, especially. Uh, these I will need to thin out at one point. And the same thing goes with these, but that's kind of how this works. I'm, I'm planting them really close together, but I will thin them out by utilizing them and eating them. So I really do like this square foot method. So definitely guys, check out these other videos. I will link in the description section below if you want to see me plant the, the carrots. Um, and then this radish. Now the radish, I didn't do great. That was the first time I did the square foot method, but look at them, they're, they're doing great now. Um, although again, big holes here. Um, some of them, some of them died back. I had an issue, uh, which I explained in that video, but, um, we had some really hot temperatures that killed off a lot of these, unfortunately, uh, right, right when they were sprouting, but look at that daikon is starting to thicken up there. I appreciate you guys watching. If you guys like this kind of content, please subscribe and hit that bell notification for future video updates. And that'll give you access to future videos of me not only using the square foot method, but other techniques that I use to garden. And also, not only do I have raised beds, but over here, I tilled up my backyard and planted some rows. Now those look pretty bad, but I'm actually letting them dry. Um, they've pretty much completely uh, produced. And so now I'm kind of letting them dry. So when I pick them, uh, these are beans, by the way, uh, I can harvest the beans a lot easier with dried pods. So that's why they look pretty bad, but they were, uh, this was really green for quite a while. Um, wheat here, so winter wheat as a cover crop, and also I'll be harvesting. So this right here is the first actual crop that I'm planting that's not a cover crop. And this is currently onions at the moment. So I've got onions around the outside row. And in the center here, I've got some lettuce and that's a good combo. Um, I gotta go through here and weed a couple of these, but the onions are all coming up. You can see them. It's hard to see, we'll get these weeds out of the way, but you can see the onions all along here. So I got four per square foot and I was able to get a ton of onions in here. So definitely stay tuned guys, because if you subscribe, you'll get uh, notifications when these videos come up, which I plan on doing a video soon on this bed. I'm also tilling up this whole section here and I've got stumps to remove. So if you wanna watch that, this is gonna be a video probably early next year. It's gonna take me a while, but I'm going through and tilling little bit by little bit, digging out stumps. I'm gonna to have to probably chainsaw that thing out. Um, I removed a stump over there. You can see the hole. Um, I removed one here already. Uh, there's a bunch of stumps all through here that I've removed. This is the biggest one, unfortunately, and that's gonna take a while, but it's a lot of work, but it will bring me beds out here that give me a lot more space to grow. I actually got 160 onions in here, and that doesn't include the lettuce in the center row, which I should get about 100 and 
130 lettuce, roughly, 128, I think. There's a lot of space to grow. We'll produce a lot of food. Um, now, the raised beds are great, but they are just so much smaller and don't produce as much food. However, with that square foot garden method, you can see I can still get quite a bit of cabbage in here and other veggies. Next thing I plan on doing, I've got these set up uh, to do the Florida weave and excuse the mess in here, guys. I, I, I don't clean up as often as I should. I've got all this everywhere, but um, the Florida weave is basically you just run line back and forth and allows things to grow up if you've got a vining you know, plant. So uh, put up stakes on either side, run some line, which I've got right there uh, that I plan on doing pretty soon because they're starting to form their tendrils and they will want to start growing up because they're doing good too. Uh, those peas have come forth. If you guys like this kind of content, please subscribe and hit that bell notification for future video updates. Also, if you could hit the like button, it would really help me and the channel out. I will see you on the next video. Now you guys try to escape the daily grind.